still see what everyone's talking about. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. Every week we try to bring you a new show helping you understand the most misunderstood way of life in the world today, which over 1.5 billion people in the world practice today. So you should really get to know Islam, really get to know your, your, your local Muslims, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help you build a better understanding, so that's how we can build tolerance within each other, and that's how we can strive to get to that peace that we're all looking for. So today we're going to be talking to a former Christian youth minister who's on the Dean Show. He's been with us many times before. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with Yusha Evans talking about Dawah to Atheists. Dialogue with an Atheist. We'll be right back on the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, brother? Good. Alhamdulillah, brother. How are you? All right. Praise Alhamdulillah. Be to God. All praise to God. Uh, thank you for coming out again. Absolutely. We're going to be talking today on the Dean Show, Dawa Dialogue with an Atheist. You know, it's our responsibility, it's our obligation as ones who um, follow Islam to extend the invitation. Just like you invite somebody over for dinner, you invite them to the ball game. We need to invite people to this wonderful way of life, which is surrender and submission to God alone and not His creation. Yes. And from there, everything else falls into place. So sometimes when you're talking to people, you come across somebody who just does not believe in God. How has your experience been with this? And how do you uh, go about talking to someone who does not believe in God? Well, most people, they, you know, there's different forms of atheism and agnostics and things of this nature. Um, you know, they'll give you the, you know, that, you know, science, you know, uh, proves there's no God, you know, with the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe and, you know, everything coming together through evolution and Darwin's theory and all of this other stuff. You know, and people have gone and tried to refute this by using, you know, huge scientific means. You have people like Harun Yahya who have gone, you know, and his extensive books on, you know, the proof of the universe, this, that, and the proof inside every other thing. You know, what? basically, you know, if you can break an atheist to a point down to look, just look around you, you know, look, look around you at this beautiful universe. It runs in constant harmony. All these billions, the numbers that are not even invented of planets, they run in a perfect manner, perfect orbit. They don't cross over each other. They don't have anything. Just look at this world. This world is in the perfect place to sustain life. We're at a couple feet closer to the sun, nothing would live here. A couple feet farther, everything would be frozen. If it rotated on the axis, any different, you know, like all of these everything things. Everything is perfect. And perfect, I mean, to the exact degree, it's perfect. Everything is in perfect synced harmony. You know, the amount of rain and the amount of evaporation is exact. All of these things scientifically prove that there's a God. And people say, oh, you know, that's come around for the Big Bang and evolution. And, you know, just per chance and things. You know, and I asked, I asked a guy one time, an atheist, you know, um, and I've heard this same analogy used before, that if I went to a Mercedes-Benz factory, say, give me every part that it takes to make a Mercedes. Give me every single piece. Put it in a big, big bin. They give you every single part, all jumbled up, put it in a big bin. You throw a bomb in there. Blow the whole thing to smithereens. You think you're going to get a Mercedes? Not at all. You know, you, you, I don't care if you throw 50. The more bombs you throw in there, the less like a Mercedes is going to start to look. So you're going to tell me that a big bang, an explosion, created all... The, we're talking about Mercedes, something that was created by human hands. Something that breaks down. Something that one day is going to corrode and fall apart. Look at this earth. You know, it runs in perfect harmony. Millions of years. Millions and millions, maybe billions of years. It's been going in perfect harmony. Nothing has happened. Look at our body. Our body runs in such a way that it's perfect harmony. Our heart beats, but we don't have to think about it. We breathe without thinking about it. Our, our, our brain functions without thinking about it. Our blood vessels. All these things happen without us having to even ponder it even a little bit. The only thing we got to do is put some food and water in it and take care of it and exercise. And it runs perfectly. So, 
You mean to tell me all of this is by chance? Because only, only someone who's either a fool will be right back. You're watching the Dean Show, and this is the mailbag. This is where we take your calls, we take your questions, so any of you wanted to call in. And for future reference, when it's playing uh, as a recording, you won't see the phone number on the screen. And we'll have... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. So I call? Yes, yes. Yes, this is the Dean Show. I'll go ahead. This is Yusuf Estes. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, but ask, you have a question, okay? All righty. All righty then. We'll do that right now. Keep your, keep your TV on and uh, we'll... Okay. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Question. Uh, they called in and they're asking us about the subject of how do you prove there's God? And how do you overcome the question when somebody asks you that where did everything come from and what about the Big Bang? That the universe is coming from a Big Bang and why don't we just accept that instead of uh, coming up with this creation business? Okay, one of the ways I like to explain it to our students is like this. It's pretty simple. First and foremost, if they're not Muslim, I always remind them that we say, thank you for asking me about my religion refer to the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad and make sure they understand that this is not something you're going to make up on the spot. Okay. The next thing though is to ask them what would happen if I take a water glass and I walk out to the pavement and I drop it and it'll shatter into many pieces, splintered and break and it'll just be destroyed, you know, glass everywhere. I say what will happen if I bring another glass and drop it? They say the same thing. I said, will it be exactly the same? They said, no, it'll be different every time, but it will always be shattered. All right. Now, another thing, when you talk about something just blowing up, we talk about that there was a, a mass that just blew up and everything came out of that. Just a big bang is what they refer to, a big bang, a blowing up. Now, we know full well about things blowing up. In fact, they are attributing all the blowings up to the Muslims in the world, aren't they? But consider this. Well, if you've seen it, and I've seen it on television, it's a horrible thing. It's never beautiful, is it? Is it? No, the only thing that comes out of explosions is chaos. When there is this random uh, blowing up or the random dropping of this glass on the pavement, you'll get mess. You don't ever get order. You don't have order that comes out of chaos. Never, ever. It doesn't happen that way. So how would it be if a tornado went through a junkyard, a salvage yard, and picked all this metal up, the cars and old refrigerators, and threw them up into the air, spun them around, and then suddenly dropped them down, and it turns out that all of it was compact together and made a brand new Mercedes with the motor running. A brand new automobile and the motor running. Would you accept that? You said, this is crazy. <laughs> this is wilder than a Steven Spielberg sci-fi movie. You're right. It is. Yet when you look to the universe, what do you see? What do you see? You see these spheres. These spheres going in elliptical orbits. The sun in an orbit. The planets around the sun in orbits. The moons going around the planets. They're in orbits too. And how is that? How does this come about? Stop and think about it. Is it possible that this kind of order comes from an explosion? without a design, without a plan. And when you look to the microscope, you look at these molecules and you, you know, you know these also are what? These are round orbs. And the, the theory of the atom is the same thing, that you have a proton, an electron, a neutron, and these are also spheres going in orbits around other spheres. So what we find under the microscope, we find in the telescope as well. And who is it that designed this? How is this plan all coming together? And a molecule of protein could not be produced by accident if you took all the elements in the universe and slammed them together for billions and billions and billions of times. They would never ever form the first molecule of protein. And protein is the essence of life itself. 
we know that all life came out of water. And that's what it says in the Quran 1400 years ago. All life is brought out of water. Allah said that, that he brought life out of water. Go check it out. Go to scienceislam.com. Prove it for yourself. Okay, let's go back to the show. Already in progress. You're watching The Dean Show. Only someone who is either a fool or someone who is so stubborn because if you really, really break it down to most atheists, it's usually not because of these factors. It usually breaks down to something like my little sister died when I was 10 years old. She was hit by a car. Or, you know, my, my mother died of cancer. You know, unexplainable events have happened in these people's lives that they don't, you know, that they, they don't want to attribute so they gave up on God. They gave up on God. Gave